Welcome to Utah Explored. Join us on a guided tour as we take you across the state to explore Utah's most amazing places, unique attractions, destinations off the beaten path, while learning all about the culture, history, and one-of-a-kind activities that you can only experience here in Utah. On each episode, we meet locals, guides, tourism professionals, and organizations across the state as they show us what they love about Utah, what there is to do in the area, how to visit these locations, and as always, discuss what we can do to protect these great places we all love for future visitors. Coming up on this episode of Utah Explored, we visit some of Utah's best outdoor adventure destinations. Together, we'll travel high into the Wasatch Mountain Range as we experience the year-round outdoor activities waiting for you at Wasatch Mountain State Park. We'll enjoy snowmobilers on a ride through the Monte Cristo Snowmobile Complex. Then, join a group of friends as they hike and bike through the iconic landscapes on a weekend road trip from Moab to Little Cottonwood Canyon. And finally, we'll join a Utah family as they take us on their yearly off-road tradition and share a legacy of OHV riding that has spanned generations. So fill up your gas tank and get ready for another exciting episode of Utah Explored. Only an hour's drive up the canyon from Salt Lake City, Wasatch Mountain State Park is nestled under the mountain range that it's named after and offers endless outdoor activities including camping, fishing, picnicking, hiking, mountain biking, golf, off-highway vehicle, and horseback riding. Winter visitors can enjoy the tubing hill at Soldier Hollow. Wasatch Mountain State Park is your gateway to year-round fun. Hi, I'm Kathy Donnell, and I'm the park ranger naturalist here at Wasatch Mountain State Park. It's a beautiful place to be out any time of the year. We have about 22,000 acres of year-round recreations. So people like to come to Wasatch Mountain State Park for winter activities. It could include snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, and then when we get into summer, then you have a lot more fishing, golf, uh, camping. Our campgrounds are very busy, and a lot of hiking and mountain biking and ATV. This is a nice area to come visit first because you can get a look at the animals and kind of see what, what maybe you might see out there and then be aware that maybe you'll see something. Wasatch is a great place because it's 22,000 acres and it backs up to national forest land. So it's really a great wild place where it, you do have a good opportunity to see wildlife. So this area of the visitor center shows some of the history of way back when in like the 1870s and that time frame when the Huber family settled the area and the mining was going on, Park City up in the Snake Creek area. Mostly what they mined in this area was silver out of the Wasatch Mountains and you can see some of the minerals that we have on display here in the, in the visitor center that show what they were mining. We just are trying to display some of the equipment and some of the history of the early settlers that were here in the, in the valley. We have a great ski course. When you first come into the visitor center, you see all of our equipment and it looks a little intimidating. I'm just gonna go through kind of what you will, what you're looking for in, in the equipment and then we can try it on and go outside and, and, and get going. So you get your shoes, you try your shoes on and then you're gonna get your poles and your poles will be um, we have a variety of poles, but your poles for cross-country skiing are going to come up to about your armpits. So you want them nice and tall because you're going to be pushing and pulling kind of with your, with your arms. So the way you measure your skis is you hold your hand up and it should go about to your wrist. All right, so now we're outside getting ready to go for a ski. And I'm going to show you how to get into your skis. You just put your toe where it's supposed to go and it clicks right in. And then when you're putting your poles on, what you do is you put your hand up through the strap and then come back down onto the pole, onto the strap. I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna start walk, pretty much walking. See, my, my feet come off the ski and then I just walk with my poles. And they really help with balance on this. 
We want you to know that you are welcome here no matter what your skill level is because it's your park and it's a lot of fun to be outside. Hi, I'm Tracy C. I'm the park manager here at Wasatch Mountain State Park. 23,000 acres of fun. We're standing out on the golf course currently, which we groom in the winter time for cross-country Nordic skiing. On the north end of the park, we do have three different trailheads for mountain biking, hiking, and a pump park that we recently put in. There's two flow trails that lead down into it, a beginner flow trail and an expert flow trail. One of the other things that we have here is a small pond where we do fishing training in the summertime for youth. The pond is open to the public and it is stocked weekly. So please come out to Wasatch Mountain State Park, enjoy all our amenities, come bike, come hike, come see the wildlife, enjoy the flowers in the summertime, rent one of our campsites, come and visit the Nordic Center, off highway vehicle riding, enjoying the pump park, just being involved in fishing on the pond, or just in feeding our ducks. We love having visitors here and we want you to come and enjoy your state park. Best day ever! Come on! Our family's here today. We've had so much fun already. We went cross country skiing, um, snowshoeing. The kids had so much fun doing that. They've never done it before and we had some awesome experiences together. You come to Wasatch State Park and it's so beautiful. I mean, look at the mountains, the sky, everything's just amazing. We love being here and having these experiences together. Today we went tubing at Soldier Hollow and it's probably one of my favorite things to do. It's super fun. You can go really fast down the hills. Everyone hold on! You don't have to worry about getting tired walking back up. It takes you right up there. I love it. I mean, we are just laughing and screaming the whole way down. It, I, I've never seen so much smiles from my kids in one go, so that was pretty rad. Summer or winter, people from all over the world find the adventure they're looking for beneath the snow-covered peaks of the Wasatch Mountains. From exploring the winding mountain trails in an ATV or simply watching the kids have the time of their life, Wasatch Mountain State Park is your gateway to year-round fun. Utah is known for having the greatest snow on earth. The Monte Cristo Recreation Area provides access to an extensive system that offer riding terrain for every skill level. We join two lifelong friends as they show us why safety is important while out on the trail. It's the freedom really of just getting on the mountain and saying, I want to go there. So it's going where you want to go and just having fun and that's what snowmobiling's about. My name's Travis. I'm up here riding with uh, my friend Cheston. My name's Cheston. So Travis and I, we made this a tradition about 10 years ago, I would say. We get out up in the mountains on our sleds and just, just have a great time. We look forward to this trip all year long. I've been snowmobiling for about 10, 15 years. And when I first started snowmobiling, I, I thought I knew how to ride. It wasn't until I went with somebody that was quite a bit better than me that I actually discovered what riding could be. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of practice to get good at it. So if people want to be good riders, the best thing you can do is, you know, get with somebody who knows how to ride. Finally I could go where I wanted to go, I could, I could boondock through the trees. It's a gradual process to get there, but once you get there, it's, it's amazing. It's the funnest sport there is. Snowmobiling, it is one of the five things that I enjoy most in life, but I also want to go home at night. I want to, to see my wife and my kids. And so safety is very important. You know, making sure you have all your safety equipment, your avalanche beacon, your shovel, your probe. Obviously, I want to set myself up for success and make sure that I can continue this tradition every year and still be able to enjoy the sport. Snowmobiling does a lot for you, a lot for the soul. I go to bed at night and dream about snowmobiling and wake up in the morning just eager to go. So it's important to make sure we keep that tradition just so we can stay close. We really want to preserve this 
for us and for other generations to come so they can enjoy the sport too. We ride because it connects us with the outdoors. It's time spent with, with good friends and it's a tradition we'll do for the rest of our lives and it's who we are. The Monte Cristo Recreation Area offers miles of groomed trails and is perfect for riders of all skill levels. Exploring Utah on a snowmobile is one adventure that you cannot miss. And to learn more about the 50th anniversary of the Utah OHV program, visit www.ohv.utah.gov. There is something magical about the landscapes of Utah that inspire people from all over the world to pack their bags, jump on a plane, and drive across the state. When three friends planned the ultimate adventure getaway, they met in Salt Lake City to begin an unforgettable road trip. From hiking in Canyonlands, arches, and camping under the Moab stars, to flying down the alpine mountain biking trails of Snowbird Resort in Little Cottonwood Canyon. You know, Utah started off like every other trip, boarding a plane, heading out of Houston to some place that was a lot more beautiful. I've always had a fascination with the desert. And for the first time in my adult life, we are gonna spend an entire weekend there. We're arriving at the Fiery Furnace here in Arches National Park. This has to be one of the most densely populated areas in the entire country for national parks. We have this place all to ourselves right now. And for good reason, because the views out here go on for miles. Welcome to Salt Lake City, Utah. We're out here for a quick camping trip in Moab, which is about four hours away from here. And then we're going to jet back to the city and do a little mountain biking up in Snowbird. And word on the street is that Oktoberfest is going on. Woo! We were on the road at first light, headed through the mountains and on into the desert. You see, out here in Utah, the terrain changes every single bend in the road. It's astonishing. We made it to Moab, Utah after about a three and a half hour drive. The plan here is just to do a little bit of hiking, sightseeing, and visit a couple national parks, and then we're gonna camp tonight. Canyonlands is one of those places that kind of just throws scale out of the window. You look over an edge and it's like a thousand foot drop, maybe even more. And looking around, you start to understand why this is such a hotbed for extreme sports. Yeah, we just made it to Double Arch. This is our last stop before we exit the park. As you can see, it is an amazing sight. Peace out, Arches. And just like that, the day hikes were done and it was time to find camp. But we'll call this the beginning of chapter two, because in our experience, there was still so much left to see. We've got a good awning, beautiful view. Tents are gonna go down in here. <laughs> All right, so these two guys are fitting in that there tent. <laughs> this is why I brought my own tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I slept great. In terms of sleep, got none. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get much sleep either. I'm with I'm, I'm team Chris on this one. Since we got up a lot earlier than expected, we're just gonna go ahead and pack up camp. The sun is coming up right now. In the world of media, we call this a target-rich environment and to think this was only steps from our tents. It was time to get back on the road because we had another huge day ahead of us. Below to chapter three, the mountains. The summer storms rolled through leaving nothing but clear skies as we entered the valley. It was gonna be a perfect day for biking. We are out here in Snowbird, Utah on the big mountain trail. It is expert level terrain. We're just tossing it around some switchbacks, kickers. 
Chris and Alex were both in rhythm, getting a little bit of air and laying it all out there on the line. You good, man? Our efforts on the trails are being rewarded right now with a couple of steins of beer at Snowbirds Oktoberfest. Einstein. Ending a trip like this is tough. You're spending a great time with your friends, absorbing amazing environments, but then your airline sends you a check-in notice and you know it's just about over. But that's okay, because we'll be back. This is Chris. The weekend happened all because of him. Gracious host. Thanks, man. You're the best. This is me, you guys probably know that by now. And this is Alex. I've known him for 20 years and he's always the soul of every trip. Keep on being you, man. Never stop adventuring. Finally, here's the three of us. Childhood friends all grown up and live in the dream. There is a reason so many people begin planning their next trip to Utah before they board the plane heading back home. A special magic lies in the rocks, mountain trails, and among the endless bends in the road. Just remember, you're only a road trip away from the experience of a lifetime here in Utah. Utah is truly nature's playground, and Salt Lake is the perfect base camp for all kinds of outdoor adventures. Within minutes from downtown, you can find yourself hiking, biking, going on an adventure at the Great Salt Lake, exploring beautiful gardens, and admiring some of the most amazing downtown murals. Whether you're looking for fresh air, outdoor fun, or a safe place to social distance, these adventures, just minutes from Salt Lake, need to be at the top of your must-do list. If you enjoy hiking, Salt Lake has everything you're looking for. From a relaxing family outing on the paved Jordan River Parkway to backpacking in the mountains that overlook the city, there are trails for every type of hiker here in Salt Lake. The Lake Blanche Trail, although challenging, offers some of the most incredible views you will ever see. When hikers reach the pristine mountain lake, the views and landscape surrounding them is unforgettable. Families and day hikers looking for a shorter afternoon getaway can explore the trails and Bear Canyon Suspension Bridge in Draper, or catch an incredible sunset overlooking the Great Salt Lake on a trail called the Living Room Hike in the hills above Salt Lake City. For bikers, the Bonneville Shoreline Trail offers some of the best biking with amazing views overlooking the city. For those looking for adrenaline and action, the resorts up Big and Little Cottonwood Canyon offer amazing access to exciting downhill single-track mountain biking trails. If you're looking for fresh air and flowers, there are multiple gardens to explore. Both Red Butte Garden and Ashton Gardens at Thanksgiving Point offer sprawling, beautifully landscaped botanical gardens filled with a diversity of flowers and hidden spaces. If you feel like getting a bit more wild, take a trip to Salt Lake's Hogel Zoo, where you'll be able to explore 42 acres of tree-lined pathways where visitors can view over 800 animals. If birds are more your thing, visit the Tracy Aviary, the oldest aviary in the nations. Over 400 birds represent over 135 different species in a tranquil, wooded setting. The streets of Salt Lake City are filled with amazing food, amazing architecture, and history around every corner. If you're looking for a perfect way to get outside and explore the city, while taking in unique art, the murals found around town are a perfect way to explore the city while getting some fresh air. With unique art, you'll never know what you'll discover around the next corner. Salt Lake is the perfect base camp for all kinds of outdoor adventures and the gateway to the adventures found around the state of Utah. To plan your next trip and for more information on all the amazing things to do in Salt Lake, go to www.visitsaltlake.com. 
Every year, families from across Utah get together and go out for a ride on their favorite OHV trails. And the excitement of everyone, young and old, as they ride their favorite OHV trails together, making new memories and passing down a family legacy of riding to the next generation. I love the mountains and I always enjoyed being up there, but uh, I didn't enjoy the long walks. <laughs> And uh, I motorcycled and uh, ATVs gave me the option of being back in the mountains and seeing all the beautiful scenery. Well, this has been a generational thing. Started with my parents. I have three other brothers and one sister. And by the time we were in high school, we all had motorcycles. an activity where it gets the whole family together no matter what we're doing we're always excited to go riding. It's really cool to see my 80 something year old grandparents out there riding and I would hope that I'm, I'm at that point when I'm their age. What riding's done to our family is it's really helped us to become close. There's so many memories and stories and pictures that we have we go back and look and laugh and um, talk about the great times we've had in the past. And so really it's building memories as a family. <laughs> I've never been a good rider. And first time I tipped over and hurt my finger and I said I'm never doing it again. So he got me a four-wheeler. Ken can drive and I can just sit back and enjoy it. So this has been our legacy. He bought our first motorcycle when I was eight years old. And my wife and I, we've uh, been riding since we were married. And she rode when she was a young child. I started motorcycling when my parents bought me my first Trail 70 Honda. So we've just always motorcycled with the family and bought all our kids machines. And, and it's just such a great family activity. I wanted them to experience the uh, opportunity to ride the bike themselves and also become more skillful. And I think it's something that uh, they've become very skillful at and, and passing on to their children and have passed on to their children. My second boy bought a side-by-side -side and he's already ha he already has his two-year-old riding in there with him. It's just really important because we've made memories from the time these children were little. And here I am getting very old now and it brings back really, really fun memories. It is so important for our family to get out and motorcycle together because it's a great tradition that we've done our whole lives and every kid can do it. We go all over the state of Utah. We love Utah. It is such a great state. It has so much great terrain. And we just unload our uh, machines and just stop a lot so they can do a lot of talking, have lots of treats. Getting us out into the mountains, you know, it's always been kind of a, an escape. Forget about work, forget about whatever's going on, get out in the hills and have a few hours just to, you know, enjoy it and be with family. Go ride for the day or spend the night somewhere and then Dutch oven dinner or something like that. It's a, it's a great uh, experience to just get away and to be able to enjoy these things and uh, I think it needs to be protected. It is a sport that everyone can participate in. My grandparents are participating in it, my younger cousins are participating in this sport, so I think that it's important to protect it because of that diversity. It's uh, very important to follow every safety rule you can. Be careful. Wear your helmet. You should be wearing gloves. You should be wearing over the ankle boots. You should be wearing long pants. And really see what it's all about because you can get into places um, that normally you wouldn't get to. You can cover a lot of ground, uh, more so than when you're hiking or mountain biking. Uh, you go great distances and see a lot of country. And I think until you do it and really experience it firsthand, it's difficult to understand.
We ride because we enjoy being out on the, on the trails and the part of the legacy that I'd like to pass on to my children. We love this. We've lo done it for generations. It's just a fun thing for the family to remember. It's a nice legacy. It really just helps you, you know, kind of get back to your roots and, and you do feel at peace, it connects you back to nature. You know, coming out on rides like this, it's really what makes us the Morrison family. It's really what makes us who we are. To the Morrison family and many other families across Utah, the time spent out on the trail has become something much more than outdoor recreation. For more information about off-highway vehicles and to learn more about the 50th anniversary of the Utah OHV program, visit www.ohv.utah.gov. On this episode of Utah Explored, we visited some of Utah's best outdoor adventure destinations, explored the year-round outdoor activities visitors can experience at Wasatch Mountain State Park, joined lifelong friends and snowmobilers on a ride through the Monte Cristo Snowmobile Complex. We put some miles on the odometer and made some great memories on a weekend road trip from Moab to Little Cottonwood Canyon. And we learned how an annual off-road tradition has brought multiple generations of a family closer together. All while passing along the importance of respectful visitation and preserving these wonderful Utah places for future generations. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Utah Explored. Join us on the next episode to explore more amazing places, unique attractions, off the beaten path destinations, while learning all about the culture, history, and one-of-a-kind activities that you can only experience here in Utah. Get out there and explore, but as always, do so with respect. See what's on the next episode and watch previous episodes at utahexplored.com.